today or will be fish, uh, crawled regularly by Google these days. So let's start with topicality. So is your page actually about the subject that Google is searching for? So if you, uh, is, like I mentioned, if Google I had a search, uh, got a search term balloons, it, it will not search, find your page if it's about compu computers, which makes sense. So how do you make sure that Google really knows that what you uh, what are what is searched is really also in the uh, on the page? So mainly you need to have your term uh, and your in, in the URL. So I have clean URL, so not no slash no ID, but a proper clean URL, uh, and also uh, make sure that in the title text uh, it is mentioned. And then it should be mentioned at least a couple of times in your content itself. Otherwise, why talk about it? Um, in which you can use synonyms because Google is smart enough. Uh, Google will also uh, look at your word count and if your content is unique. So if you copy paste it from somewhere else, uh, Google will check which content was the original. So if you're not the original uh, poster, then something uh, you will not uh, get high up in the ranking. So what kind of Drupal modules can you use for that? So uh, there's the Yoast CEO um, module. It's a real-time CEO for Drupal, uh, which is based on the Yoast CEO module for WordPress. Um, yeah, and that will clearly see if, if you want your page to focus on certain keywords if the page will rank good enough. So basically you, you can type in uh, a search word and then it will say, well, like uh, like for example, it's the word this example, uh, if you don't use images on your page, well, maybe you should add some because images tell more than a thousand words and a video even more. Um, and also, you know, in this case, in this example, the keyword didn't appear on the URL. So that's a big no-no. So make sure that the URLs are correct. And there are some other uh, cases and uh, issues it will explain and also gives a solution for it. So that's how you do uh, topicality. Uh, and the module I didn't mention here, I forgot to put in last moment when I was changing my uh, slides, is the path auto module, it's fairly widely used. So that would create automatically uh, clean URLs for you if you set them up properly. Mm, how you set them up, yeah, that's up to you, what you think is a wise choice, but including a no title is uh, a good idea. Next up is the uh, quality. So. Uh, how does uh, how good is your site's reputation? Um, uh, Google uh, uses the the eat uh, uh, yeah the the the, the eat uh, what's the word uh, yeah it's, it's synonyms uh, the, the word creates eat uh, it's about expertise so is the person writing about the art the, the writing the article. Uh, is he or she an expert in, in, in that field? Uh, does he or she know what they're, they're talking about? Uh, yeah, so yeah. then there's also the, uh, oh, there's a, I always struggle with that word, the authoritativeness uh, of the person writing the article. It could also be the company itself. Um, so, it is wise to uh, add a link to the biography of the author, so it tells more about the author uh, itself. Uh, so Google will recognize, oh, this person knows uh, their stuff, and this should be a proper uh, article. And it's also wise if, if you have a job title, put it behind the. Uh, the name, so it gives a little bit of reference of what uh, such a person is doing within the company. And also the trustworthiness, um, that is, 
uh, if you write content, and that's mostly for your clients instead for yourself probably, uh, write it to be useful for the visitors, not for the search engine. You, you really need to write for uh, the visitors because that's why you are on the internet. And Google is getting better in, uh, and better and better in uh, recognizing your, your language and uh, your grammar and, and, and thus also your content. So you need to be focusing on what you are writing. So yeah, this is mostly content and uh, uh, people based. So there's not really a Drupal module I can uh, point you at. So the next thing is the page speed. Um, yeah, the page speed is a, a big thing right now. Like I said, uh, current uh, uh, yeah, current uh, situation in the world. People want information fast, so your page needs to load fast. So I have to. Uh, two examples of the FCP and the LCP. The FCP is the first contentful uh, paint, which means that this, uh, the, the first part of the page is rendered. And the LCP is not the last, it's the largest contentful paint, and that means that the page is rendered and ready for use. Uh, in a, a top example, you see that uh, it takes a while before everything is properly uh, uh, properly loaded. So they do uh, at least uh, preserve space for the images that are showing up. So it's not like uh, everything will bounce up and down while you're trying to do something on the site. Um, but it's still, you have to wait that everything is loaded. On the other uh, page, uh, it is very fast. You see that the LCP is already on the second uh, uh, point, even though the images don't look fully loaded yet. They are lazy loaded, so you only see the main color of the image before the rest of the color is rendered. And for Google, that is enough. The page is useful. You see something, even though it's not what the client expected. The client might want to uh, wait a little bit longer, but for Google, this, this is useful enough to start and uh, make snippets of the site. So you, yeah, you want to make sure that everything that you do is properly handled. Then you have the first input delay, and that means uh, if a client is interactive, interacting with the page, how long does it take before something happens? Uh, you want it as fast as possible. Uh, Google prefers it to be within 50 milliseconds for the first, uh, at least a little bit of response. So yeah, if you are uh, having event no, uh, handlers and they are only loaded when the page is fully loaded, then it can take some time before something happens. And then Google says, yeah, okay, the page is loaded, but I still cannot do anything, or the page is half loaded, and I want to go click and go back, and I cannot do that because I have to wait until the page is loaded. Then Oh, it was going so well. <laughs> Images. Uh, so it's uh, get a pop up that my internet connection is properly. Yeah. Ask him to rewind a minute. Can you hear me, Dick? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Could you, we? Can you go back about uh, uh, half a minute or so? Half a minute. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I was half a minute ago. <laughs> I can go back one slide. Is that uh, okay? Uh, no, we were, we're, you were okay on that slide. I think it was uh, if you were finishing up about FID, I think. FID, okay. And, uh, thank you. So FID means, uh, yeah, the response time when a user tries to interact with the page, which means uh, he's clicking on something, and how long does it take until the first response com comes, like a, a higher scroll or uh, just a simple uh, submit button, directly submitting something, which would be weird because probably he needs to fill in a form first, but 
uh, could be a next button or something. Uh, yeah, you don't want the, the visitor to wait until the, uh, the rest of the page is loaded and then the end there is a handle. So you need to make sure that if you're building something and it has event handlers that the client can interact pretty fast with, that they also are moved on the top of the line and directly handled. Um, yeah, the other next the last point is the TTI, uh, which is the time to interactive, which means uh, how long does it take before a page is properly usable for uh, the user? So the uh, everything that's rendered that needs to be rendered, uh, the event handlers are in place, and yeah, the page is pretty responsive to the user actions on the screen. So. That's the biggest uh, thing that uh, Google looks for, and that should be below five seconds. That's the ideal uh, scoring for you. So what can you do to make sure your page loads fast? Well, of course, you can have a fast host. That makes sense. Uh, you can add uh, an uh, advanced CSS and JavaScript aggregation module that uh, makes sure your site and that, that all the CSS and all the, the JavaScript that's used on the page is uh, combined and uh, compressed to a, as small as possible so it loads faster. Uh, the picture is from the module page, so they, they show how much uh, you can win by using the module uh, without any other changes. Uh, another thing is the accelerated mobile pages. Um, Google looks for mobile first, so if you have fast mobile pages, that's a big win for Google as well. Um, then you have all sorts of caching solutions. You have uh, uh, Memcache and, and, and there are a lot of uh, modules and uh, system caches that you can apply. And there's also a Drupal cache itself, uh, the core cache with proper tagging. Um, yeah, that's a bit much to explain uh, today, but I would uh, urge you to properly look into it and apply it where possible. And of course, make sure that your image uh, aren't too big. Don't use a full background size image if you're only showing it as an avatar, because that, yeah, that just takes too long. Uh, you can use the picture tag, which is in core, uh, to show certain images depending on the uh, resolution. So if you're on a mobile, you see a smaller picture, and if I'm on my laptop, I see a bigger one. <coughs> if maybe even a diff totally different picture, but that's up to you if you're building the site. Um, so yeah, look uh, for those. Make sure that everything is as small as possible to make sure that the page is loading as fast as possible. Then comes a big abracadabra from Google itself, uh, the Rain Brain. Like it says, Rain, Rain Brain converts the textual contents of search queries into word factors, also known as distributed representations, each of which has a unique coordinate address in the mathematical space. Factors close to each other, each other in the space correspond in linguistic similarity. That's a big mouthful. Um, and yeah, what, what it means that it, it, it searches for words that are also used uh, next to it. So it's not only used looking for a balloon, but it's looking for uh, uh, a cord for, on which the balloon is hanging, or uh, certain colors, uh, certain shapes, maybe even certain professions. Uh, yeah, so it makes sure that if you're looking for some thing that what should be the most relevant search for you and uh, there's not much you can do about it because it's totally um, uh, a self-learning algorithm so uh, yeah write proper content so that uh, rain brain can learn properly and that's the only thing you can do for that uh, but red, uh, it works with entities, and an uh, entity is a thing or concept that is singular, unique, well-defined, and distinguishable. So that means that if you say something that it's automatically clear 
what you're talking about. And Google would love that because that makes their search results better than uh, what they say, uh, they say. But if I say Apple, I could be talking about uh, the company, of course, Apple. I could be talking about fruit. But I could also be talking, for example, about New York, the Big Apple. So the word Apple itself is not uh, unique enough. And so we need to make sure that uh, uh, what Google does is, uh, if you're searching for Apple, it will not show only the company. It will also show in the search results uh, the fruit and maybe even uh, New York if it's popular enough. That means that if you search for something and the first results will not be only for that single topic. There will be a spread for, uh, both, uh, for, uh, for the other versions as well. And it's only uh, checking how much is the spread used for. So if they see that most people are talking about Apple, uh, the company, then you will see more results of Apple, the company, if you search for Apple and less of the fruit, but the fruit will be still be somewhere between the results, but there will be less results. So what you need to do is make sure that you have structured data, which is the following part, of what you are, uh, what your data is representing. Is it the company, is it the fruit? Are we talking about the city? Um, yeah, and the way Google prefers it is the JSON uh, LD, which is the uh, JavaScript object notation for linked data, which I have an example on the right side how that should look. It's just a, a kind of JavaScript, but only showing a JSON notation. Um, yeah, I can walk through it, but I think uh, most people can read JSON. It's not the hardest uh, structure to read. So it basically gives extra information or all the information that Google needs to work with. And it also will use this uh, data for its snippets. So if, uh, if it will show a small version, uh, if you're yeah, let's say you're looking for a restaurant and then you will need to have opening hours there as well. So Google will know uh, those inf that information and it will show on the sh a snippet when you open a, a restaurant on Google Maps, or for example, oh, those were the opening times. So that, uh, yeah, it, it, it's up to you to make sure that uh, those are properly filled. and. Uh, there's also microdata and REF. REF is Resource de uh, Description Framework. And uh, those give, uh, it work with extra attributes that you add to the HTML tags and with extra information. And those are also used by uh, sometimes by social media. I don't think Google uses it anymore unless there is no JSON LD. Uh, so that's still a a way to uh, properly fill uh, and give the extra metadata to Google. And luckily, there's a module that uh, helps you uh, create those uh, JSON-LD, that's the schema.org meta tag. Uh, and currently, it has a, a lot of um, the, 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 the types that it's using are the most top-level types of schema.org. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to uh, include lower ones, or maybe there's an API to make sure that you can create your own. Uh, but if, if you uh, have something, then you can yeah fill it in, use the token module to make sure that everything is properly filled, and uh, yeah, it will create a, a JSON LD as uh, uh, part of code and put it into uh, your website. So you don't have to do a lot. If you build this properly, uh, it will go smoothly for the client. And then we come to the last part, which is the freshness. So how fresh uh, is your data? Now Google uh, favors fresh content only for specific uh, queries that deserve freshness, what is known as the query deserved freshness. Um, 
which means that it will crawl regularly if the uh, data is important. Like recent events are hot topics. Well, everybody is talking about COVID-19, so that's a hot topic. So a lot of sites that discuss COVID-19 will be crawled regularly by uh, Google. There's also the regularly recurring events. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a proper example for that, but uh, something like uh, elections, but uh, those need to, need to be regularly, and they are definitely recurring, but yeah, uh, in sport events like the Olympics, which are on a regular basis, with the exception of this year maybe, but okay, that's a different story. And frequent updates. If you frequently update your page and the information is uh, very important, then uh, also Google will crawl you a lot more. But make sure that your content is still relevant if you're talking you know, about nonsense or just change one character. Uh, that's not uh, good enough. So how does this all work together? Well. Um, uh, as an example, this is just some numbers. Uh, I didn't really do a search query on any uh, site specifically. Uh, you see that this, this first seven, and then there are other uh, rankings that Google uses that we know exist, but we don't know uh, what they do or anything because yeah, Google tries to keep some part of it secret because yeah, otherwise other companies can do it as well. Um, so yeah, it basically gives a ranking on each uh, uh, factor, and then it multiplies it with each other, and it gives a big number, and, it, and that's the bit number, and that's a number that the search engine uses for your ranking. So the higher the bit, the better your score is. But if you fail a little bit, you will drop very fast. So it's not uh, a thing that you can focus on one thing. You have to do everything. So, um, or at least make sure that your score is a one or higher. That helps a lot. If you're below a one yet, then you will drop a lot. But the higher your score on anything, uh, it will help up. But if you go down, it will hurt you really hard. So, are there next to Drupal any tools that you can use? Of course, there are the Google tools. Um, you have the mobile friendly test, which uh, helps you to see uh, if Google finds your site mobile friendly enough. And it will even return some recommendations if you uh, don't have a proper mobile website. Um, the rich result test, uh, it shows which uh, results can be created by structured data, but not how it will uh, look. Uh, the page speed insights shows you how fast Google thinks your site is. So you can have a different experience in Google, but it shows how Google will work with it. And the search console shows you how Google indexes your site. So what is it looking at? Uh, the title tag, the Yes, the images, the, yeah, everything that you have on the content page, uh, as long as it's relevant. And there I go again. And the last one is the structured data testing tool, which is, uh, yeah, it shows you the snippet that Google will create with the, the data that you are giving. And so you can properly test if everything is okay, that you don't have the description and the uh, uh, title backwards or something like that. So, and yeah, or that something is missing because you forgot to uh, fill it in. And those are the, yeah, the tools that you can use. Uh, and I think I'm faster than I thought I would be. Yeah, I am a little bit. Um, yeah, that's it. Are there any questions?
Doesn't look like it. Okay, that's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Dick. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.